in New Jersey, the governor's race, it has shifted gears and it's now in full campaign swing. Now, the presumptive Democratic nominee, State Senator Barbara Buono, she's out with her first TV spots going after the governor on everything from jobs to the economy. Governor Christie, for his part, He's also going after uh, his opponent and her record, trying to tie her to John Corzine and also slamming her on issues from taxes and state spending. Still, for most observers, this race isn't about who's going to win this thing, but how big the spread will be. The governor still holds a massive 34-point lead on Buono in the latest poll. And remember, this is a state which is heavily uh, advantage to Democrats when it comes to registration. But again, there's no guarantee re-election is going to be this kind of a cakewalk for the governor, despite his personal popularity and positive reviews, especially following Hurricane Sandy. His record when it comes to jobs in the economy does have some holes. New Jersey's unemployment rate sits a little under 9 percent. That's 45th in the nation, more than a point above for that matter. Uh, the national average and higher than that of any of the states in our region. Now, for more on this, I want to bring in Matt Katz, writer of the Christie Chronicles for the Philly Inquirer. Matt, I appreciate this, and uh, you can see the lead at the end of the tunnel. November's not that far away. Um, that said, can you explain the popularity for the governor, and I debate this every night, I think he's maybe the most underestimated politician for a variety of reasons. That said, um, between the spots that seem to paint him as a typical politician trying to get a free ride um, and showing off the family in the process to all the bullying that we've seen along the way, the legitimate economic questions, he seems to be made out of Teflon. This guy, nothing seems to stick to him, and he always gets the benefit of the doubt. Can you figure out why? I think it comes down to the fact that people just genuinely like him. Um, the image that they see of him on TV, in the news, commercials, news programs, or whatnot, uh, comes across to them as real and authentic. It comes across to them as something different from what they get from politicians. Now, we can debate whether that's true or not, but the reality is that um, New Jerseyans, including Democrats, um, uh, like him and believe that there's an authenticity there that is unusual, and they're willing to overlook some of the other issues he has. But just to give it context, um, the idea that a guy who gave the keynote address um, at the Republican National Convention, and maybe he waited 16 minutes to name, to mention the name of the nominee, but that's for another night. Still, that the fact that the Mark Zuckerbergs, that the Silicon Alley titans here are falling over themselves to write this guy checks, um, it still almost defies mm -hmm. explanation. Do you attach it to that he's one of the few politicians that seems to put partisanship to the side, like in moment of crisis? Is that a big reason even guys outside of New Jersey love him? Yeah, I think there have been a couple of instances that have uh, separated him from the pack in terms of other Republicans. Uh, first was the fact that he was willing to praise uh, President Obama just days before the election against Mitt Romney because of his response uh, to Hurricane Sandy. Um, that was seen as just remarkable. And for uh, people who um, don't sort of fit into hard ideological um, camps, that was really appealing to them. And then um, when he went after the Speaker of the House, John Boehner, the uh, top elected Republican in, in Washington, over, over Sandy Aid. Um, and that was, uh, that was amazing as well to a lot of people. Uh, John Boehner, the Republicans in Congress weren't approving um, Sandy Aid as quickly as uh, the governor said it was needed. Uh, they weren't approving it as quickly as they had for like Hurricane Katrina, for example. And um, Christie called, them, called him out in no uncertain terms. So for people who were kind of sick and tired of the um, standard D versus R sniping, um, this came across as refreshing. He went after the NRA when the NRA used the Obama girls in an advertisement. So even though he's got some um, very uh, uh, cons conservative or, or standard conservative views on a lot of issues, um, the fact that he's willing to sort of um, step away from that orthodoxy when, um, when, when it might seem a reasonable time to do so uh, uh, seems to appeal to a lot of people, and, and that um, is one explanation for mm. the sky-high approval ratings. And even with the NRA story, he does a pretty, I think, restrictive gun control policy, um, and even after it comes out, he gets a check from the an NRA lobbyist for three grand, even after he uh, uh, does a proposal most Democrats would have a tough time getting through. Um, 
I've heard from so many folks, uh, both elected and people who follow this, who say, just give him time, this guy's going to implode. They see the clips of him screaming at a guy on the boardwalk. Uh, they see him going after a teacher at a town hall meeting. Uh, they see him using language that comes right on the edge and even crosses it sometimes. It says, this doesn't feel um, like something that should come out of the mouth of a governor. But yet, two days later, He's laughing on some morning national program and all is forgiven. Do even some of his biggest critics acknowledge this isn't just some loudmouth buffoon, there's a method to his madness? You know, there's been, there's been um, criticism of him that he's out of control, that there, he yells and that means he's out of control. And I think there's a realization now that he's that he's not that yes there is a method to his madness that when he calls people out it's not because he's flown off the handle but he knows exactly what he's doing and he can keep it under control i mean he's going to be uh he'll uh, ultimately have some debates this year when he's running for re-election um and i'm sure there might be some expectation that he's gonna freak out on the opponent but i don't think you'll see that um he he knows when to keep his cool and he knows when to raise his voice. And he also has an extraordinary number of uh, words in his repertoire that approach the level of, the, the, approach the line of decency, but don't cross it. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's pretty incredible. I had to regard. explain to somebody what numbnuts was a reference to after one of the uh, Christie addresses. Uh, Matt, yes. yeah, to, to that point, um, yeah. can you come up with a scenario where Barbara Buono um, proves us all wrong uh, because, let's face it, Cory Booker didn't think he could beat him. Um, and I think he picked a better race, at least for his temperament, right. when he's going to run next year for U.S. Senate. Um, but even some of his bigger critics, sure. from Sheila Oliver to Senator Sweeney to the rest of them, they're not going to go out on a limb here and, and do everything possible to help out Barbara Buono. I just don't see a path for her to come even close to making this a five or an eight point race here. I think at this point we'd be surprised if this is single digits in November. I mean, that is the conventional wisdom. I mean, she is uh, outspent three to one and she has state public matching funds, which she doesn't have. Uh, the down 30 points in the polls, very low name recognition, especially out of her central Jersey district. The only um, uh, w one possibility that people have brought up is that if he does, as we were talking about before, uh, fly off the handle and does appear out of control some point close to the election. For example, um, uh, a year and a half ago, he yelled at a uh, Navy SEAL and he uh, called him an idiot. Um, and this was a, a particularly, um, uh, this is a particular incident, it was at a town hall meeting um, that he, he caught a lot of flack for, more so than he has from his other incidents. And if there was something like that, um, let's say a, uh, somebody down the shore whose home was destroyed by Sandy complains to him at a town hall meeting in September or October um, and is, is a little aggressive about it and maybe he's more aggressive back and it's seen as cold-hearted and it makes national news and he doesn't clean it up properly. I mean, that, that, that's a scenario that I've been told could um, give, uh, uh, allow her to make up some headway, but th that's an example of a race that he would have to lose. Um, I haven't been shown evidence of what she can really do at this point um, to make up all the way some of the significant ground that she, she needs to make up in order to make this a, a neck and neck race. And the funny part is the math doesn't necessarily lend itself to the Christie narrative on stuff that we talked before on both economy, uh, employment, uh, there's been, uh, you know, issues of mismanagement, whether it be race to the top here or some of the private contractor buddies that uh, mismanage some of the, uh, the prisons, uh, sure. the outhouses. So, Matt, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. All right, everybody. When we come back, we switch gears. We go across the river, if you will. Another politician uh, back in the news, but not with the popularity of the New Jersey governor, Anthony Weiner. He's trying to convince New Yorkers to give him a second chance. That and other follow-ups all straight ahead.